Let's see if I can make corporate restructuring exciting. So I'm gonna take a break from Black Mirror for a little bit, uh, just for my own sanity. Uh, I, I think, I, I don't know how some people binge this show and not just sink into the worst depressions of their lives. So um, there are more Black Mirror reviews coming, but I've got this one tonight. Tomorrow will be my Q&A response because I'll have hit 10,000 subscribers by then. And then after that, I might get back to Black Mirror, though I might have something else in there. But anyways, it's coming back, taking a couple days off from it though. I need to. So let's talk about Warner Brothers and the making of DC films. So we've got the latest bit of news in regards to that. And as you might have guessed from the intro, it's not uh, its not anything particularly about the creative side. It's not the, that they've announced a new property or a new director or hire an actor. Is it? It's nothing like that. They have assigned a new head uh, for the at the executive level to basically manage the, um, the DC films. Now, this was a position previously occupied by John Berg. I talked about him getting the boot, oh, maybe about a month ago or so. And it, him getting the boot, and I even said this at the time, he was basically the scapegoat. It's hard to say that the state of the DCEU could possibly have been his fault. He wasn't even directly involved until Wonder Woman. Maybe if you wanted to push it, you could blame him to a certain extent for Justice League specifically. But a lot of the problems with Justice League have to do with the foundation that the film was built on. And at least as much as the film as a thing in and of itself. So I still feel like the guy kind of got a bum rap. But he's out, um, and the new guy that they brought in is a guy by the name of Walter Hamada. Now, this is a guy I've never heard of, which is not shocking. There aren't a ton of studio executives that I know by name, but he's being ported in from New Line, which is wholly owned by Warner Brothers. And so he's going to be taking things over from where John Berg was. Now, looking at Walter Hamada's resume on IMDb, he's he's been a producer for a little while, pretty much always at New Line, which means... He's got basically exclusively horror movies right now. Now that's no kind of indicator about what sort of things interest him as a producer. That just, that's linked to the fact that it was at New Line. And you know, New Line, their most successful thing ever might have been the Lord of the Rings, but at the end of the day, they are the house that horror built. They are the house that Freddy built. So, you know, they, horror has always been their wheelhouse. And since uh, Warner Brothers absorbed them wholly, that, that's kind of the niche that uh, Warner Brothers has them do. So, but he has been doing a fair number of movies for a while, and he doesn't have a ton of outright stinkers. Like, the last one you could say that he was involved in that was a definite flop was probably The Incredible Burt Wonderstone, but that's almost five years ago now. So, his resume's been pretty clean since then. It's got a couple of horror movies that I've never heard of. I'm going to assume they went direct to streaming or something like that, but they also look like they were shot really cheap, so they probably didn't lose money on that. But, here's the most relevant thing. He's actually got a certain degree of cinematic universe experience. Not a universe nearly as expansive as, you know, what DC hopes to build, but he has been a producer on The Conjuring films, meaning The Conjuring 1 and 2, as well as Annabelle and Annabelle Creation. Now, regardless of what you think about the specific um, strengths or weaknesses of any of those given films or of that sort of franchise as a whole, they have been successful. They have, they and they've been coherent. Um, and so he has some degree of franchise management, which is something John Berg never had. As much as I kind of like want to give the guy a pass, because I feel like they, they threw him in the deep end before he could swim in the first place. But looking at the resumes, this guy makes a heck of a lot more sense than John Berg ever did, because John Berg did not have a lot on his resume. And he didn't have any like mass franchise work on his resume. Now, Walter Hamada has been working on a lower scale, but he's been working on something that is more comparable to what DC and Warner Brothers will want him to do. So it's scaling up something he already does as opposed to throwing him in and seeing if he swims. So this is actually kind of a positive move as far as I'll as far as I'm concerned. Now, it's not like I'm suddenly going this means everything will be great. I mean, is He's the executive producer. That doesn't mean that suddenly he's going to steer the ship correctly. But there isn't a heck of a lot of red flags about this guy. And it, it makes a 
decent amount of sense as far as these things go. I haven't mentioned yet uh, Jeff Johns, who is basically still on hand in the same capacity, which supposedly is advisory and guiding the story. I think it's really debatable how much influence Jeff Johns has in this thing at all. Honestly, I think he's a figurehead. I think they trot him out at Comic-Con to, you know, keep, keep the fanboys on their side. I really think he has very little to do with these projects. If anything, maybe they run the script by him to like to catch continuity references to stuff or maybe things like that. I can't imagine he's deeply involved in the production of these films. And I kind of wish they just cut him loose so that he could get back to the actual comics um, where I think he's had a better track record than being involved in these various adaptations to whatever degree he even is involved in the first place. That being said, it's kind of nice maybe that they didn't cut him loose, if only so that it doesn't look like they're blaming him for what happened as much as they decide to blame John Berg, because no question, it's definitely not Jeff Johns' fault, because like I said, I'm pretty sure they're not even letting him have any direct influence over this mess in the first place. But we've got a new guy in now, and he's a new guy who, on paper, certainly is an improvement um, on the old guy in terms of what he's already done and what he's handled. So... I'm I'm not at a point where I'm suddenly like positive about uh, the DCEU and Warner Brothers handling of it, but I'm not accumulating more negatives, which in and of itself is kind of impressive. And actually, they seem to be doing the one major thing that I think they needed to do, which is slow the hell down because so much of what went wrong with this universe as a whole and some of the specific movies uh, in it, I mean, easily you can see how this impacted Batman v Superman, the decision to do a team up and try and set up a whole universe in only the second film in, the, in this overall franchise, Suicide Squad, which only had six weeks to write the script, Justice League, which they were constantly trying to fix mid-production. All of this is deeply impacted by how quick they decided they were going to do all this stuff early on. Because before Batman v Superman even came out, they announced five years worth of stuff with dates for films, uh, probably about half of which aren't even going to happen at all now. But... More recently, you know, we've got Aquaman coming out next year. They've given 2019 as a year for Wonder Woman 2 and for Shazam, but that's it. They haven't canceled any of the other things they had in production. Not officially. I'm sure some of them will be. But they also haven't announced anything new. And those other things that don't have years yet, they haven't slapped years on to them. Which means, vitally, they are slowing down. They are waiting to see how the adjustments they're making actually play out before they make their next decision on the next two, three, four, five things they're going to do. Because, again, regardless of whether or not you like Batman v Superman, or even if you like Suicide Squad, Justice League, or any of it, you cannot deny the fact that you can look at the production history and see very clearly that Justice League had pre-production and a script written on the assumption that Batman v Superman was going to be a universally acclaimed film. It came out, critics hated it, and audiences were deeply divided on it, and they tried to, and they almost immediately went into shooting. There was no time to do any major correctives to try and adjust for the response. They could only like try and tweak it as they went along because they were moving too fast and they couldn't slow down. And they seem to actually be doing that now. John Berg getting removed was announced about a month after Justice League came out and under it was clear that that was underperforming pretty early early on. So they could have thrown him under the bus, gotten someone else in the next week. But they didn't. They waited a month before they junked him. And they waited about another month before announcing a replacement. These are now looking like slower, more measured, more thought out decisions being made. Now, does that mean all the decisions being made will be good? No, you can always make new mistakes. But it does appear that the, their biggest, most driving force for so many of their mistakes, i.e. rushing, they seem to be easing off of. And that, more than anything, gives me some degree of hope, not faith. I don't have faith in Warner Brothers and the DCEU yet. I have faith in Patty Jenkins and Wonder Woman 2, but that's it. That doesn't extend outwards. But 
I'm now starting to see a landscape where things could actually be built and work from and they can come up with something that is actually working as opposed to going all in on something that they don't even know if people want yet and just praying that it works, which is kind of what they did for the last few movies up to this point. So yeah, oddly enough, a new studio head being assigned and a guy who I've never heard of somehow manages to give me hope for the future of the DCEU. I have no clue how that happened. How did we get here? Um, but in any case, what are your thoughts on this? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Do all the things like subscribe. I got a podcast and a Twitter and an email. All that stuff's down below. So until next time, this council is adjourned.